This is Channel 8 WMTW, Maine's Total Weather and News continues. An early morning stabbing here at the Denny's in Portland. I'm Morgan Sturdivant with a live update coming up after weather. This morning we are looking at another cool start, but I'll let you know when the weather changes this weekend. Governor LePage doubles down on his stance on Narcan, his latest comments at his town hall meeting and why he says Narcan will not solve the state's heroin problem. Welcome back to Maine's Total Weather News this morning. I'm Christina Frank. Good morning. I'm Megan Torgerson. It's Thursday, April 28th. Let's get a first check of Maine's Total Weather with meteorologist Mallory Brook. Good morning, Mallory. Uh, let's hope we get a carbon copy today of what we had yesterday. I think we will. Thankfully, we are in a nice weather pattern that will stick with us through the next uh, several days, continuing to see the trend be that we are warming up gradually with plenty of sunshine. We're taking a live look in Madison this morning where it's always growing season, not quite there outside yet, but nonetheless, we have meteorologist Ed McInerney there at, for our weather at your school highlight and I'm a big fan of those backyard farm tomatoes and can't wait to get growing and planting ourselves but we have to wait of course those temperatures are staying rather cool for the next few days would not even attempt to get anything outside just yet clear sky as you make your way out this morning temperatures around 21 in Sanford 32 in Portland 24 right now in Freiburg and 36 in Kittery we do complete the day with sunshine and blue sky not going to change any of that from yesterday and into the evening, we'll bring in a few clouds to southern Maine. That's ahead of a storm system to our south. It doesn't bring us anything but those little bit of clouds into York County during the overnight, and we may bring in a few more during the day Friday, but overall a clear end to our work week. 8 to 8 forecast showing those temperatures hanging around 50 degrees for today. A few clouds here and there, but really not bringing anything in the way of precipitation until the weekend. I'll have more details on that. We'll check in with Ted McInerney again in Madison. That's coming up in 10 minutes. Mallory, thank you. 529 on this Thursday morning, and we're continuing to follow that developing story out of Portland this morning where a man has been stabbed. WMTW News 8's Morgan Sturdivant is live at the scene with the latest. Morgan, what do we know right now? Well, right now, Christina, police are investigating a situation that happened early this morning here at the Denny's on Brighton Avenue and Riverside Street. We're just on the Portland and Westbrook city line here. They before they left around 430 this morning. That's when the police cleared the scene here. They said that one man was stabbed at the restaurant. He was taken to the hospital. They said they did not say uh, what the extent of his injuries were, but did say that there was nobody in custody at this point. So they are still looking for a suspect uh, in this uh, situation right now. There is a Westbrook police officer here right now. I'm not sure why they are here, um, if they're doing any questioning, things like that. But at this point, we are waiting to hear back from Portland police themselves to give us an update on the situation here. Uh, but again, one man was reported as stabbed here at the Denny's on Brighton Avenue in Portland. Megan. Morgan, thank you. This afternoon, protesters will rally in an attempt to save the India Street Clinic Health Center in Portland. Cuts in the city budget would close the center at the end of the year and transfer services to the Portland Community Health Center. The center currently provides care for hundreds of people, helping many patients with HIV and AIDS, providing clean needles and HIV medication. Patients and community members opposed to the cuts are circulating a petition asking city councilors not to approve the cuts. I think there's some lack of understanding on the part of the city council and the um, town manager about what this clinic actually does and the role that it has in the community. I, I just don't think they understand how important this clinic is, especially speaking as a gay person to the gay and lesbian community of Portland. The budget proposal insists residents will not see a drop in services, but will rather get them elsewhere. The city council will discuss the budget at a workshop on May 9th. Happening now, the NTSB says now that they've seen how the El Faro's Voyage data recorder is oriented relative to its mast, it's clear they're going to have to bring in specialized recovery equipment. Right now, there's no confirmed timeline for when that new mission will begin. The VDR was found on the ocean floor Tuesday. Four Mainers were on board the ship when it sank in October.
532 in your total politics this morning. Governor LePage defending his veto of making Narcan available without a prescription. Now, the comments came last night at the governor's latest town hall meeting in Damariscotta. Narcan is the heroin overdose reversal drug. LePage says when it comes to the state's heroin epidemic, providing a way for addicts to get Narcan will not solve the problem. Who's responsible for who? You know, a shot of Narcan is $70, and the person who gets it doesn't have to pay it back. I think the first time, second time, third time even, I don't mind they're not paying back, because it's very difficult to get off addiction. But after a dozen times, I think it's time that we make a new arrangement. The legislature votes tomorrow to override LePage's veto. It is now up to the legislature where a citizen's initiative to legalize marijuana goes from here. Following a court challenge, Secretary of State Matthew Dunlop approved the petition to get the question on the ballot in November. The legislature can now enact the proposal or send it to voters. 533, there's a move to bring business from Canada back to Maine. Representatives Shelley Pingree and Bruce Poliquin are proposing legislation to update regulations at American airports. Now, part of that measure would mean allowing Cuban-bound flights to make stops at American airports to refuel and restock. They say airlines have moved flights to Canada because they prefer to make technical stops at the same airport. Vice President Joe Biden taking his fight against cancer to the Vatican. Biden will make a speech in Vatican City tomorrow advocating for international cooperation and global research partnerships in cancer studies. He will also visit with Pope Francis. Biden has focused his final year in office accelerating federal efforts to cure cancer ever since his son died of the disease last year. A new study shows Maine has the most children with an incarcerated parent in all of New England. The study found that 8% of the state's children had an incarcerated parent between 2011 and 2012. That's the 14th highest rate in the nation. Corrections officials say the state's opioid crisis is largely responsible for the high number of mothers incarcerated here in the state. This morning, Ted Cruz and his new VP pick, Carly Fiorina, are tag teaming with several stops in Indiana. Bernie Sanders shakes things up in the Democratic race. WMTW News 8's Nicole Killian is in Washington with more on this shift in strategy. Good morning. Hey, good morning to you, Megan. And some think that this Cruz Fiorina matchup is a bold move, while others believe it's an act of desperation. Well, I think all would acknowledge this race, if anything, it is unusual. This is a fight for the soul of our party and the future of our nation. Ted Cruz and new vice presidential running mate Carly Fiorina explaining the why now as they get ready to blanket the state of Indiana today with three scheduled events. The selection was mocked by Donald Trump, who deepened his own bench with an endorsement from legendary basketball coach Bobby Knight. Trump is trying to pivot to general election mode, delivering a foreign policy speech here in Washington yesterday. While over on the Democratic side, Bernie Sanders also made some moves after his losses to Hillary Clinton, reportedly laying off hundreds of staffers. Now in a statement, his campaign says with 80% of the races now complete, it doesn't require as many workers, although it does plan to maintain a strong staff to help with upcoming contest. Megan? So Nicole, you mentioned Donald Trump in his big foreign policy speech in D.C., so how did that go? Well, getting mixed reaction, uh, you know, on one hand, you have folks like uh, the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee saying it was a very good speech. Of course, Trump focusing on putting America first uh, in his foreign policy strategy. Uh, but on the other side, you have former uh, presidential candidate Lindsey Graham, uh, also a senator who said that Trump's remarks were pathetic. Also, former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, who does have to be a Clinton supporter, called Trump's speech incoherent. Megan? All right, News 8's Nicole Killian live in Washington. Thank you for the update this morning. In Washington, a House committee approving a requirement for women to register for the draft. Supporters say it would help grow equality for women. In a twist, the author of the bill actually voted against it, saying he opposes the amendment and only drafted the measure as a way to create a discussion about the decision by the Pentagon to open all combat jobs to women. The full House will take up the bill at a later date. Now, many people say there's no longer a need for the draft. So we want to know, do you think lawmakers should end the draft? 
Join the conversation on our Facebook page or reply on Twitter. Use the hashtag WMTWQOD. Tonight at 5 on WMTW News 8, what's it like to be a convicted sex offender in Maine? Well, one man tells us his story about being on the sex offender registry, but he's more than one, uh, he's one of more than 3,000 people, rather, who have since been taken off. He says that's a relief, but the damage has been done. It's been miserable. It's been hell. Jobs, housing, um, just the fact that you're on the registry, people just, you know, they scan on that and they see your face pop up. Inside the mind of a sex offender, that's tonight starting at 5 on WMTW News 8. Still ahead on Maine's total weather and news this morning, new details into the final moments before Prince's death. The substance or investigators say they found on him. Plus, severe weather continues to rock the Midwest. The latest on the destruction and where those storms are expected to hit next. And we are live in Madison at Backyard Farms with thousands and thousands of tomatoes and a nice warm greenhouse. It's today's community highlight for weather at your school. We have a check of your current conditions coming up right after the break.